Hello and welcome to Once More with Feeling La the Bar. Newest album from Steel Panther. Listening to it, it felt like I was on a massive bender. Which admittedly is quite uh, fitting because it's Steel Panther. But... Yeah. Um, oh, this album. Uh, where to start with this album? Where to start with this album? Um, it's a Steel Panther album, it sounds like Steel Panther, it's about stuff that Steel Panther generally sing about. It's Steel Panther. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it's very difficult to review an album like this, because as I was saying previously, they're like an upmarket Buck Cherry. Sounds about right. Because Buck Cherry, all their songs are sex, drugs, and more sex. Or the other way around. And there was natural deuces of rock and roll in there as well. Yeah. Pretty much if you think of sex, drugs and rock and roll in the mo- in current year, it, it, you pretty much expect to get fun, though. Yeah. Well, actually, you say current year, they're like... They epitomise the 80s, really. Yeah, but they basically brought the 80s forward to the, the real now. Real now? I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know what I mean. Present day, present time. I was about to make that joke, but you beat me to it. You beat me like a red-headed stepchild. Uh, um, okay, so first thing we, that I'll establish is we actually, for the first time ever, we will be covering the special edition version. Because I thought, fuck it, why not? So the deluxe edition... Which is actually the version that Red-Headed Stepchild is from. Uh, it's got two extra tracks. Yeah, two extra tracks. Um, the frustrating thing is, one of the best tracks on the album is only on the Deluxe Edition. Well, it's quite common, it seems. That, oh, there's just quite a few bonus tracks like that that are amongst the more interesting ones, which is weird. Yeah. At least kind of because they think, oh, we need to put all these songs and, you know, make it fit the theme of the album, and then the bonus track is allowed to do whatever the hell they want. They can put things on there that wouldn't necessarily fit with the main concept. Yeah, but can you really say Red-Headed Stepchild doesn't fit the main concept? To be fair, when it comes to Steel Panther, they take a concept and follow it directly and never deviate from it. Yeah. They are their own concept. <laughs> hmm. But, yeah, um, I'll be honest, I found this album pretty boring. I was just saying, they really deviate from their uh, what they're known for, and this is another example of them doing what they're known for. Mm. The thing is, now, I'll draw a comparison. If you think to bands like Ailstorm, now they've got a very specific theme going on, but it's very easy to write variations on that theme, because with piracy... There's so many tales that you can draw references from and so many practices and all that sort of thing that you can really have a varied album. With Steel Panther, all their songs are about sex, drugs, drinking, and a combination of those three. Mostly yeah. sex and something else. Usually sex. Yeah. <laughs> Six, six, and rock and sex. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll be honest. On a second listen through, I started skipping songs. It's sort of like get halfway through, and it's sort of like, yeah, I've listened to enough to get my notes down, and ah, it, it, it just, it's. This is an exhausting album to listen through, and not in the good way. I've been glad to agree personally. Yeah. I mean, musically, I guess it's interesting. I mean, I I did um, kind of like um, Walk of Shame's sort of bluesy feel to it. But lyrically, it's just more drunken debauchery. There's nothing to it. Um, I think, really, the most interesting songs are... Um, I suppose wrong side of the tracks. That's that's an all right track. I mean, that's basically 
sort of lamenting the fame and wealth accumulated because there's so many drawbacks. It's not a sort of more money, more problems. It's a like one of one of the lines is um, got the statue of David, but it's missing the cock. And sort of like, um, and it it comes to its peak when it's sort of like basically saying that he's trailer trash, despite all this. It, you know, he's basically a Beverly Hillbilly, more or less. That's essentially what you can infer from what he's saying. Um, now, obviously, there are going to be people making calls of misogyny with Steel Panther. It always happens. Every album they've released, I'm pretty sure there's been sort of cries of, oh, it's misogynistic. And for the most part, I am unflappable, but... There is one song that I will actually agree with those cries about. And that's... Yeah. Can you guess which song I'm probably referring to? Uh, I honestly can't really remember the song that much. Fair days. Um, Listen to it right now and I still don't particularly remember it. Fair days. Uh, Pussy Ain't Free is the one I'm referring to. Um, now, I'm very unflappable. I, I don't tend to read that much into most things. But this is where it gets to the actually no yeah I I see where you're coming from because it's essentially lamenting the old old ideology of a gold digging of gold digging whores being the only ones who will put out, but only if you buy them shiny things. Yeah. Um, not sure what more I can say on that. It's just it's that is pretty much what the song is about um much. i'll be honest there is one song that um i do find strangely is a you can actually relate to it um wasted too much time um it's relatable in a very abstract sense railing against a commonly followed path of simply settling and it ends up that um, you've settled for someone who you end up treating like complete crap. So you, that that one is a bit more of a you can actually relate to it in a real world sense. Um, got any input there? Honestly, no, not really. <laughs> I find it actually hard to think of anything to say. Just this album did not leave much of an impression on me, like at all. Yeah. Uh, I think I kind of agree with you in the fact that it's it's not necessarily a bad album, but it just it's very linear. Yeah, I mean, I was saying about how um, the best song on the album is a bonus track, um, "Momentary Epiphany." That I'd say is the best song on the album because of how radically different it is from everything else. You know, musically. It's different. It's actually, it feels like they've exercised some creativity with its structure and instrumentation. Lyrically, it's discuss it's, it seems like it's going completely against everything else said in the album. Because it's, it's kind of lamenting the whole, I keep saying lamenting, but that's the only way to describe it. Um, the whole... Drugs, sex, debauchery, all that sort of thing. Just sort of discussing how they're just... It's kind of discussing how they're kind of stuck in a cycle. Mm. Kind of, I don't know whether they're in a situation that they don't really know how to get out of because they've kind of just dedicated their career to it. Yeah. So, who knows? Maybe this... Maybe it was designed as a way of... Um, saying yeah we kind of want a way to get out of this can someone help i don't know maybe it was just them throwing a curveball uh yeah i really don't have much more to say on this because it was it was a tiring album i remember the musicianship a bit but it was just more 80s music i mean um poontang boomerang the instrumentation of that reminded me of several Def Leppard songs. Yeah. Um, uh, now the fun starts. It's just another sex, drugs and more sex song. 
but set to a mid-tempo. There was nothing more to it. Um, I suppose the other mo most interesting track on the album is Redhead headed stepchild simply for how what the fuck it is it's different it's like they took the concept of snm and took it to the most logical extreme and we're not talking straight up snm we're talking the comical concept you know the sort of thing that people who are actually into the snm scene would laugh at um either laugh at or go this isn't anything we do. Fuck you. And just taking it to the most natural extreme. But it's sort of like... Um, I feel like I should just read out what the opening lines of it are so, so that people get an idea. Um, yeah. You got my attention when you ran away after kicking my balls and saying I was gay. Blowing your rape wheel whistle... Wheel? What? <laughs> Spraying me with mace, baby, my emasculation was my saving grace. My big fat erection, while it was on display, I was wearing bike shorts on that particular day. It was a moving target, but you have great aim. Now I'm in love with you, and you're the one to blame. Defile me more than ever before. You make me feel just like the filth on the floor smack me my behind you're driving me wild come on and beat me like a red-headed stepchild i mean i mean i mean what do you even say to that <laughs> well we can still find the like we're gonna be offensive and yeah well yeah what was that the uh Shying away from that stuff as per usual. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, this is going to be a short episode because I can't really say much more. I was hoping that this would be quite a fun episode. Yeah, Steel Panther! Yeah, we're going to be talking about a really raunchy album. And I'm just sitting here feeling like I've been pounding my head against the wall. I feel like to classic class up my ear canals i'd have to listen uh, i'd have to start off by listening to kesha and it's all sort of like when you're when you're thinking kesha could be more classy that that is worrying um oh yeah i'm i'm going to call it here because i have nothing more to say than if you do feel the need to listen to this album, YouTube it or pirate it or something, because I hate to say this, but it's not worth the money. But it is going to sell, so I don't even know why I bother saying that. Um, Final score. At first I was going to give it a 2.5 out of 5. Then it lowered to a 2. And now I'm thinking 1.35 out of 5. 1.35, that's a really specific number. Okay, you want me to get really specific? 1.35279864211. Yeah. Um, I'll probably give it probably a 2, simply because, you know, at least it is musically competent. Yeah. It's just because of it's not particularly interesting. Yeah. Hopefully, whatever we cover next will be more entertaining. I mean... Uh, what's coming out this month? I, I, I feel like we should just plan ahead from now on because otherwise things are going to get a bit uh, difficult. Um, right, let's see what's coming out. I, I'll just quickly have a look what's coming out in April. Um... Ooh, Deep Purple! Um... Well, let's see. Next episode will be second. Yes, will would be on the ninth. So, oh, pentatonics. Um, I don't know. Shall we go with something we know or something we don't know? 
Something we don't know could have interesting consequences. So. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, you know what we should do. Oh boy. Um. There's a contemporary worship music slash contemporary Christian music album coming out. We could do that. <laughs> Two agnostics reviewing a Christian music album. That, that could that could be interesting. Um, who the fuck are Alpha Vile? I have no idea. Oh, synth pop band. We could do that. Synth pop, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I realise that we're just trailing off into what we might do next but that's because this album fuck it um i mean was there any i'll just finish off was there any particular standout track for you honestly i can't say there was yeah um yeah, let's go with alpha vial so next album we'll be reviewing is strange attractor by alpha vial um so we'll catch you on the next show, whenever that'll be. And it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. On the wrong side of the tracks, I'm Beverly Hills.